Yeah, so hi everyone. Um, first of all, I want to thank you for your interest in my talk on cookie cutter. My name is Raphael, I'm from Germany, and well, I uh, do love open source software and more specifically Python. Um, and I'd like to say a few words on, about my background. So I'm not just yet a web developer in Python, but I do have a solid background in 3D. So uh, it's a field where Python is actually used quite frequently. Um, I am a core developer of Cookie Cutter. Um, I worked for on the Adopt PyTest month in April. Um, and yeah, I did a, like a, I was acting as a technical reviewer on a book on Kiwi, a framework I will talk about in just a second. Um, more importantly, uh, yeah, as I mentioned, I have the commitment to cookie cutter, and this will be going to be my main subject of my presentation. Uh, my GitHub username is Hackabroad, uh, and um, I do have a Twitter, so please feel free to just shoot me a text with feedback or questions later on. As you can possibly tell from the title of, my, uh, of this talk, I like Star Wars. Um, and I was more than happy to exchange ideas uh, with our very own master, with Giru, uh, just on a very philosophical question in a sense, but, but see for yourself. <laughs> yeah, so anyhow, so um, the talk um, is about cookie cutter. And cookie cutter is... Um, in a sense, a command line utility that helps you to start new projects um, following the best practices of the Python community, um, simply based on templates um, that other people may write for you, author for you, or you can just do it on your own. Um, we are hosted on GitHub. So if you want to check it out, it's uh, Audrey R um, slash cookie cutter. Um, and it's written in pure Python, as you can see from the blue bar. Um, yeah, so you can also find it on Piper. We are currently at version uh, 1.0. Um, and we do have a quite um, large set of features, I think. So one of the best things about Cookie Cutter is that it's working on all platforms. So it's Windows, Mac, Linux, um, and Python 2.7, 3.3, 3.4, and also PyPy. Um, we managed to add Unicode support for each of those platforms and the Python versions, which was um, and it's open source, obviously. So the technology is used. Um, Cookie Cutter uses templates to create projects, uh, which can be arbitrary complex. So we use Jinda 2 for the whole templating, and um, we do support both Git and Mercurial. Um, almost 100% of our code base is covered by PyTest tests, and we leverage talks for just for testing all the different environments and Python versions, obviously. So about the community, we have a team of five uh, people right now. So it's Audrey, Daniel, Michael, Paul Moore, and myself. Um, and we welcome everyone to just participate and contribute to the code base. Up to now, we are at 61 people, I think. But it may have changed um, from the time I pr um, yeah, developed this presentation uh, until today. Um, the people of you who are working on Django might know those people. Uh, this is uh, Audrey and Daniel. Um, they are the authors of two, two scoops of Django. They just recently uh, published the newest version um, targeting Django 1.8. Um, yeah, and this is them celebrating the 10th birthday of the Django project uh, two weeks ago. Um, about something about the history of Cookie Cutter. So it was, in a way, born at Europython in Florence uh, two years ago. So um, this is a a citation of Audrey. So when they came back from Florence, they were like all pumped up and wanted to sprint on open source. And Audrey had so many scripts uh, flying around that she was actually thinking of being very useful. So she wanted to publish them. But every time she was facing that, um, she was doing the same work over and over again. And this eventually was the moment when Cookie Cutter was born. Um, because she said, well, why not just have a template for it and focus on the, like, a production logic itself instead of just setting up a setup pie all the time. Um, that's just plain stupid. Yeah. So she decided uh, to dig into templates and um, learn Ginger 2, or get the deeper knowledge of that. Um, yeah, and it wasn't until I think it was May 2014 that I uh, co started contributing on Cookie Cutter. So it was uh, a very simple uh, template at that time. Um, and you see there is like a spike. So the next contribution was in November. I had like this uh, a bit of a crazy idea. So I wanted to learn PyTest or 
get more knowledge of it. And what well, I said, well, they, ha they have a code coverage of almost 100%. The code is very, very clean. So why not just transfer the whole code base of uh, py te Python test to just PyTest? And that's actually what I did. It took us, I don't know, maybe 60 days. And right now, with the latest release, we are at pure PyTest tests, and it worked out perfectly fine. Um, so this was ultimately the reason when I was promoted to get the commit bit, I think. Yeah, so um, in this presentation, I want to uh, show you just how easy it can be to um, author a template for cookie cutter. Um, and I'm very, very positive that cookie cutter can be used in various um, occasions, regardless of the, um, the field that you are actually working in. In the following, I'm going to explain you how to author a template from scratch. Um, so for this presentation, I'm also using like a framework for uh, natural user interfaces. It's called Kiwi. Um, so my question to the audience is, how many of you actually know Kiwi? Okay, that's actually quite a, quite a bit, yeah. Um, so even Guido recognized Kiwi, so I think he mentioned it on PyCon 2014 last year, and uh, he emphasized that people should uh, start contributing to the project. Sadly, as far as I know, no one from the core contributors is here um, right now. Um, yeah, but the best thing of Kiwi is that you can just write Python code for your mobile. Um, so I think that's, that's just pure awesome. And um, I think the only person disagreeing to this may be the Pearl guy from the Lightning Talks yesterday. <laughs> so um, it was an amazing talk, but still, yeah. I think we should do more Python on mobile devices. Um, so the first thing when I, what I do when I start a template from scratch is usually just creating a project in GitHub because it's just having features that you really want to leverage. It's like creating a git ignore for Python files. It has a readme already set up for you, and you get a license file for free as well. So next you want to... Um, so those of you who are familiar with templating with Jinja possibly um, know the syntax already. It's like uh, two, using uh, two curly braces, then some kind of domain and a variable name. So I'm using that uh, since I want to use um, the repository name for both my project, but also for my Python package, I'm using the repo name for both of these. Um, and inside, I'm just creating four files. One is an init to have a Python package, then the a module for my application. Um, uh, then I have like a KV file. KV uses its own very um, language of describing a user interface in a very declarative way. So it's very, very easy to do rapid prototyping and such. But it's totally optional, so you can write your um, user interface programmatically as well, or you can just combine it. Uh, it's up to you. And then I'm using um, a file called mainpy. So when you decide eventually to deploy your um, Python application to an um, Android device, for example, there is a tool called uh, Kiwi Launcher. It's in the, in the app, in the Play Store. And it enables you to just run Python source code without like uh, compiling it. Um, so you don't need to create an APK for that. You can just run it through the, com through the Kiwi launcher and it will just work. Yeah, so inside of my uh, init, I do a bit of like, a, what's that? It's a meta information about my package and I'm using like a full name, an email and the version. Um, pretty standard, I think. Next, we, um, this is um, the module for the application itself. Um, Kiwi does this thing in the very beginning that um, wants you to specify the version of Kiwi that you are using. It's just like a, a safety switch uh, that when you are using a very old version and you try to use Kiwi um, features that are not yet available, it will just uh, raise a proper exception and you know what it's about. Um, then we inherit from app, obviously, and we simply uh, set up the title, and the build is a similar way of, um, so it will automatically detect the Kiwi language file and return what's ever inside there. Um, and this is actually one of the main features of Cookie Cutter. Um, you can use it for every programming language or markup format that you can think of. It's just, it needs to be readable uh, as a text. Um, so. Yeah, that's, I think that's one of the best features about Cookie Cutter. Next, main is just running the application. That's basically it. Um, and as I said, it's one of the easiest way to deploy your um, Android app. So this is a Kiwi file. Um, again, it requires you to just specify the version that you want to use. And this is like a root element. You, we want just to have a button and a text, and the text of the button should be the application title. 
Um, as I said, it's optional. You can do it in source code, um, just as you prefer. Um, one of the most important things about cookie cutter is it requires you to do two things. One of which is having a JSON file, which is called cookie cutter JSON. You specify all the variables inside there. And the next one is to have a folder that's actually like templated. So that's basically it. That takes you literally like 30 seconds to have a cookie cutter template. Um, this is how a cookie cutter JSON looks like. So you, as I said, you just mention all the variables that you want to use uh, throughout your source code. I'm using f my name or the author's name, an email, an application title. I'm using an app class name variable. This is specific to Kiwi, so I was thinking it might be uh, very helpful for me. Uh, a repository name, a version, and the Kiwi version. Um, the values um, are the defaults. So when you are prompted on the command line for entering those values, this will be like the default that's um, shown to the user. Yeah, so talking about advanced usage, what you can do with Kiwi is you can template your variable and variables inside of the JSON. Yeah. So there is a best practice on Python that you are possibly familiar with, that you have like a project name, which is human readable, then you have a, a repository name, which is just all lowercase uh, with dashes, and you usually use all lowercase without dashes, just pure letters for your Python package. So this is not exactly what I've been showing here, but what I'm using here is that I'm using the application title. I replace every uh, space with uh, just an empty string, so it removes all the spaces. And it adds an app, just the string app at the very end. Um, the repository norm should be all lowercase, um, and it doesn't have the app. Um, another great feature of cookie cutter is, yes, you, uh, is that you can have post and pre-generation um, hooks. So you ne simply need to have a hooks folder at the very root of your template. And inside you can put a shell script or a Python um, module and it will be executed by cookie cutter either before the generation of the project or afterwards. So um, this is an example of a post-generation um, hook that I'm actually using. It's a bit of code, but the most important part is that you need to understand that Kiwi has its own way of detecting a Kiwi file language file. Um, so what I'm doing over here is just that I'm using, by default, the application um, class name as a Kiwi language file um, name. But since the user is allowed, so there's no kind of validation that he isn't allowed to use an app, like the string app at the, at the end of the class name, um, I'm just making sure that Kiwi, because Kiwi will strip, um, as you can see, it does the slicing thing with the last characters, um, um, lower app class name. So I'm just, this is basically uh, an adaption of the source Kiwi source code that's uh, responsible for finding Kiwi files. So where are we uh, right now? So we have, um, at the root of our project, we have a, a JSON. Then, as I said, the only uh, mandatory name, you have a templated root name for your repository. Um, we have a Kiwi file language, we have a module, we have an init, a main, we have the license file that was generated by GitHub that I just copied over from the root. A readme, you can, I usually use restructured text for that, so that's why it's not using the markdown file at the very, from the very beginning. A hooks folder and the license and the readme. So I'm a bit into testing, so what I tried to, uh, because there's no kind of way that's um, already very well established for testing Kiwi applications, um, I tried a bit, so, and I'm here for the sprint, so if everyone, anyone is kind of interested in testing Kiwi apps, I'm very open for suggestions and collaborating and maybe writing a PyTest plugin for that. Um, so just approach me and I would be very happy to collaborate. Yeah, so, but I did find a solution in the very end. Um, I'm using a, um, it's just a, a part of the, of the source code. Next slide will show you what's actually important. So I'm using the interactive launcher. It's a feature of Kiwi where you can change the application at runtime so it doesn't block you from um, changing the code. So I'm lever leveraging that um, to modify my application um, eventually. So I return the application, and this is actually my test. So it will just receive the fixture from PyTest, um, which is m one of the most incredible features that I use in testing frameworks. And this is my test. It's just a plain assertion, and I'm just making sure that the application title is actually what I specified uh, in the command line prompt when creating the, the project. 
Next up, I want to have it as a PyPy um, compliant package, so I'm using uh, setup.py. Uh, I usually, uh, I originally had a couple of slides on that topic, but since we had so many talks on the whole packaging and distribution uh, talk, I just included some of the most important uh, resources for that kind of information. Um, so the official one, then Jeff Knupp did a very, very great blog post, which has, I don't know, a million comments on it. Uh, and Yonel, who presented his uh, packaging talk, I think it was on Tuesday, and he also referred to Cookie Cutter. So this is him, and he's actually one of the contributors for the templates, but also Cookie Cutter itself. So next up is uh, Sphinx documentation. You always want to have like an auto-generated documentation for your source code. Um, and this is uh, actually a funny thing that you can um, leverage exactly the same thing. So I'm using the Sphinx uh, quick start usually. It will do basically everything for you to get started. And I just literally feed the cookie cutter variables to Sphinx and it will just put the variables inside of the Sphinx documentation. So afterwards, it will just be done, basically. <laughs> Another feature of cookie cutter is to have a user configuration. So in your home directory, you can just have a cookie cutter RC. And what it does is it will, when you use cookie cutter and you use it quite frequently, you don't want to enter the same values over and over again. So when I'm running cookie cutter on my own machine, I pretty much know that I'm Raphael, and I do use this email, and my GitHub username is still the same. So what I do, I have this in my home directory. It's by, I specify those values, and it also features abbreviations. So typing, you don't need to type that much. Um, cookie cutter, uh, cookie dozer is one of my um, templates that uses build dozer to build the uh, APK for Android. Um, and I just have an abbreviation for that, so I can I'll show you on the next slide how it works. Um, and another thing is just an abbreviation for GitHub. So when I run this command at the very top, it just says, I'm referring to GitHub, I want to use a, a, a template of Audrey, and I want to use the pi package offer. Um, and when cookie cutter is running, as you can see, it just clones it, and it asks me for the details. Um, and it automatically sets up the values from my, um, I can still overwrite them, of course, but it will just uh, predefine the context. Yeah, so I want to talk about features that are currently in development. We actually merged them already, but we still didn't find the time to actually um, publish them on PyPy just yet, but it's, it's just a matter of days, I think. So uh, next up is coming, uh, we have choices in our templates. So it was requested by the community, and we also find it very uh, reasonable to have choices in templates. So at the bottom, you see I can specify an orientation for my app with Kiwi. I can say it's, it doesn't matter, it will be resized and auto-adjusted, but I also can fix it to being landscape or portrait mode. So when I run this uh, from a template, I will be prompted by click. I mentioned it in a talk, I think yesterday, um, that we use click for all the prompting, um, and it's working really nice. So if any one of you wants to write a command line that's interactive, just use click. It was working like a charm. So this is a prompt for choices. Um, I implemented it in a way that it will just use indices for the choices because users can put every text in there. Um, so it would be very long if you need to type the choice. So I just decided to stick for indices. Um, this is an implementation for the click prompts because uh, I didn't find any really great usage uh, on GitHub for click prompts with choices, so I decided to share my, my, like my, my findings to you. Um, so as you can see at the very bottom, I'm just using click um, for prompt. The prompt is set up uh, up front. Um, it's just, a, as you saw on the previous slide, it was just strings and showing the choices. And the most important part is that you specify a type. You can also use click boolean, uh, for example, so it will make sure that when you enter a value, it's really a boolean. But for this, I'm using choice. So click will do every, like, if you type in something that's completely awkward, it will make sure that you, it's sort of repeated as long as you really pick one of those choices. Yeah, so talking about the community. Um, I think we are doing a pretty good job at, um, are replying to pull requests and uh, answering features uh, issue to issues. Um, so I really welcome you, everyone to contribute and submit your own template or even contribute to the code base. 
So right now we have 41 templates in total. Most of them are for Python, obviously, but we do have uh, very various um, templates already, um, some of which I don't even know what they really do, but um, I think half of the Python templates actually target Django, so it seems to be a common case on Django applications to use a lot of code, uh, so you may want to use a template for that. Uh, one of the most popular ones is uh, actually from PyDanny um, himself, um, and they do have, I don't know, so many, so it, I think it's yeah, 700 stars on, on GitHub already, so it's used quite frequently. And it's, uh, it's not only Python code, obviously, it has all languages inside. It's really a great template. It comes with a lot of features. Uh, I'm just not commenting too much on them. Um, you can just check it out on GitHub on your own. Um, next up, we have um, Cookie Cutter Pi Library. This is actually from Yonel, who gave the talk on the packaging topic on Tuesday. So everything he's been uh, talking about, he wrote an blo amazing blog post on that uh, topic, and he um, authored the template with all the best practices that he's using for his own work, and uh, a lot of people seem to like it. So he has features as well, uh, continuous integration, um, set up PyTest talks, obviously, yeah, and I actually want to have like a quick demo of Cookie Cutter for you. Um, so just give me a second. Yeah, so um, usually um, what I do is um, I will just run Cookie Cutter in here. Um, So what I usually do, as I already said, um, I use the abbreviations, um, but since the Wi-Fi is a bit flaky sometimes, I'm using just my local copy of my, my template. Um, but there is a way of, um, also there's a feature, you can specify a flag with dash C, which will automatically check out a branch of a, like a repository which is hosted on GitHub. So you don't need to clone it and change the branch on your own, you can specify it and Cookie Gutter will handle it for you. So when I'm running this, it will obviously ask me for uh, a name. And since, um, let's just pretend for a minute that I'm Harry. <laughs> and I decide to, I, I want to write a, like a Python app that uh, lets people met, meet uh, on conferences. Um, uh, how many of you have been to the lightning talks just yesterday? Okay. <laughs> Okay, so my application will, uh, will be Pinder. So um, <laughs> uh, the application class name, as I uh, told you, um, the, it will automatically update like the default value depending on the values that you entered before. So obviously I said I want to use, uh, call my name Pinder. Uh, the app class name will be automatically adjusted. I will just stick to the default for now. The repository name, um, I'll just call it Fuba. Uh, the short description, let's say, uh, an app to meet squirrels, squirrels, uh, badgers, uh, and mice at Europe. Uh, the version, well, it's in development still. Um, Cookie uh, Kiwi did an update just recently, so um, I should be on this version already. So, yeah, and there you go. Um, so. And what you see at the very bottom after replying to, this is actually my post generation hook. So the template also um, features internationalization uh, right now. So I support uh, English, German, Spanish, and French at the time. And I'm using GNU get text for all, the, all this stuff. Um, so this is just um, me calling a, a make file that handles all the um, library setup. So what I do then is usually um, I just go to the repository and I create a new virtual environment. Um, I already want to use uh, to set up uh, like the folder for the, uh, and I call it foo. So um, then there is a thing, Kiwi uses Titan internally and sometimes I feel like it's a bit of a struggle to set up. So I'm usually just doing it once and I know it works so I use, um, the dependencies uh, from this very um, virtual environment. So there's this command in uh, virtual end wrapper that actually lets you use dependencies from another virtual environment. So what I do now is 
just calling Python set up by develop. It will um, set up an entry point for me, and I can um, run, what was the name, finder. No, that's wrong. Yeah, so here we go. We have a key running Kiwi application. Um, and it's, as you can see, it features the values that we entered. Um, I'm afraid the uh, screen, uh, the font size is a bit. So I'm just increasing the font size for the application. There we go. So it says like the application title, then the short description that I put in. Um, it says that it's built with Kiwi, um, and it can change like the language during runtime. So since we are here in Bilbao, I'll just use the Spanish version. Uh, I'm not a Spanish speaker myself, so I kind of depend on my friends to not fool me and <laughs> display very, very offensive stuff here. But it's, uh, I think it should be fine. <laughs> Yeah, so um, I was actually able to deploy it. Um, I'm on a Mac right now, but I, I was using Ubuntu and it was just perfectly fine. Once you set up a tool called Buildozer, it's in the Kiwi namespace as well, it will handle all the packaging for an APK for you. Um, right now, Kiwi, uh, as I said, it's for, it's for Mac OS, it's for Windows, it's for iOS, it's for um, Linux, uh, it's for Android, obviously. Um, but the support is by far just, uh, it's, I think Linux and Android should be the, the best, uh, best uh, environments for that right now. Um, yeah, I can also use the German version and just change like the speed of in which the slides. It has multi-touch and it has gesture recognition, so I really recommend you um, just giving it a try and see if it works out for you. Um, and it also has like, I can click, this is a link, so it will automatically take me to the repository. Um, yeah, that's it for the most part. Um, yeah, so I'm actually writing a blog, um, and in January I was uh, uh, publishing like a series on cookie cutter, so if you really want to dig into this topic, um, feel free to just, uh, it's hackerbro.de and just find those three um, posts. They're all two, two pages long and quite um, yeah, comprehensive, I think. Um, yeah, as I said, um, if you really like the artworks, please give, a, uh, give my friend uh, Anselm from Germany uh, some kind of love. <laughs> so he really, I think he deserves some kind of applause later on. He did an amazing job on those graphics. Yeah, and other than that, yeah, thank you. <laughs> As I already said, you can find me on Twitter and GitHub, and uh, thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much, Rafael. <laughs> Questions, please? Uh, hi. Hi. Uh, this project looks uh, actually quite similar to Yeoman from JavaScript Universe. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Maybe you have seen that one. So I was wondering, uh, uh, have you looked at Yeoman and how Cookie Cutter compares to it, and what? Are, and do you think it's worth it to have uh, like our own Python version of of that? Well, to be perfectly honest, I don't know that project. Um, but I think there are plenty of uh, tools that already use templates. So there is Scaffold, I think, as well. Um, we do feature them on our um, GitHub front page. Um, so there is no, like, um, I don't know. We can, we can still try to find a common solution, I think. Um, just yesterday, someone uh, on Twitter said that he actually re-implemented Cookie Cutter and Go. So it seems to be a, a very fun thing to do. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, just. I don't really know the tool, so, but yeah, maybe a solution that we should have a look at. Yeah, <clears throat> thank you for the talk. Um, I got a question, how do you handle updates? So if, for instance, I use uh, one of the cookie cutter templates to create my project, 
and um, two months or half a year later realized that the template has now some cool new features in can I just run it again and update my project which uh, has now a lot of code inside is this possible or? up to now it's actually not but it's requested by the community and uh, I mean, we are all full-time professionals, so we just didn't find the time to implement just yet. But we are very open to it. So it, as I said, it's requested quite often. Um, so we still need to find a solution for that. And once we have one, so please feel free to just um, recommend anything or uh, just submit an issue and we'll talk about it. OK, thank you. Yeah. Nobody else? Okay, so uh, maybe you want to give an applause to, Pyle, uh, to Daniel and Audrey as well. They sadly couldn't make it this year to EuroPython, but I, did, I think they did a, a tremendous uh, good job on this too as well. So please give me, do me the favor and just give them applause as well. <laughs>